The hammer spring is also double wound, which Elf claims gives it the strongest spring you can get in this cassette space. Now, we don't talk a lot about this, but I have seen quite a few NATO primers that have snuck their way into some lower tiers of ammo that I have. And I'm very curious if the stronger hammer of the Elf trigger is gonna make it so there's no problem with those. I've seen some other triggers definitely get tripped up and even across like three or four different platforms. So yes, we're definitely gonna mix in that batch of ammo that causes problems. Elf also states the hammer uses a full roller bearing, giving it an extremely fast lockup and fire rate, along with being completely drop safe. I'll give you some foreshadowing. This is the first trigger I've ever seen where I can't pull it as fast as that trigger actually wants to run. It's, it's just impressive. Hey wizards, welcome back. Now in the world of firearms, I think we all get swept up in a lot of marketing and buzzwords about a lot of stuff that we can't really confirm, like guaranteed one MOA. I mean, even BCA gives a one MOA guarantee on like their $20 barrel, so I, I don't think there's a lot of validity to that. But at SHOT Show, we were stopped by a pretty amazing group of people at the Elfman Tactical booth who, they stopped us and made a pretty bold claim in saying that the Apex trigger is a no-fail trigger. And I won't lie to you, I was like, well, that's a pretty ballsy thing to say. Prove it. So today, we'll be taking a look at the Elfman Tactical Apex Trigger and see if it really is no fail. Just off the bat, it says a lot from the Elfman team that, you know, I kind of tried to call their bluff and they're like, here, here you go, go try it. So I, I don't know if these are actually just buzzwords after all. The one MOA guarantee on barrels though, that is like the capital of scam town. But what I found was so interesting is that this trigger has more than just a no-fail operation. It actually has an entire no-fail design, meaning that if screws fall out or different pieces come loose, it still operates. It's pretty crazy and I'll show you how it all works. But let's take a moment before we dig into this and thank today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored in part by HRT Tactical Gear. HRT offers high-end tactical equipment for the everyday citizen to the seasoned veteran with products such as the innovative arc belt and modular AWS light to provide a single system for both weapon and handheld lights. Being able to use the same light head on my handheld light as on my weapon light or swap the head from my weapon light to my handheld is pretty awesome. And as always, you can use discount code TLDCO if you wanna check that out over at hrttacticalgear.com. So big thanks to HRT for providing us with all the ammo for the testing we're gonna to do today. Now, to my biases, I don't really have any, I know Elfman, I've talked to them, but I'm really kind of a skeptic who wants to test out their claims. Unlike some of you purists, I do generally like cassette style triggers, but I've always leaned a bit more towards rise and ballistic engineering as my personal favorites. Now, I will say the range testing did win me over pretty heavily over to the Elfman camp, and they did send me this Apex and a Elf SE for review also. But does that sway me on what I'm gonna say? I don't think so. I just wanna put all the cards on the table so you can go watch other reviews and other videos, and then you could be the most educated consumer you could possibly be if you're gonna go buy this. I mean, the results are gonna be what they're gonna be. It's either gonna fail or it's not. You're, you're gonna wanna see this though. I even mixed in a total mess of just complete ass ammo just to try to trip this thing up. But let's look at it up close first, and then we'll go to the range. Looking first, we have the cassette that the whole Apex trigger rides in with this red color that has the ELF logo on one side and the flag on the other. Now, if you like it or hate it, it doesn't really matter because none of that's visible when you actually install it. Oh, and yes, I do have the bright red trigger shoe. I mostly did red so it shows up better and you guys can all see it on video, but one, you can remove it or two, you can get it in black. Starting at the rear, the ELF triggers use a rear knob to adjust the trigger pull weight from two and three quarters pounds all the way up to five pounds. It uses a side spring to hold it in place. This means you can easily access the trigger weight adjustment when the trigger is installed and just adjust it with a flathead. I like this because it means I don't need to have a ton of little Allen wrenches on me and then dig into my lower at the range. It's just right there out in the open and easy to adjust. And no, it doesn't interfere with operation. 
I know somebody's gonna ask that. But for those of you who like options, you can also order the Apex or any of the ELF triggers in a no-knob configuration. I have the ELF SE here with the more standard no-knob, as this may be required in some more unique lowers. I will say though, having both in hand and playing with both, the knob version is significantly easier to adjust, and I do recommend you go with that version if you're gonna pick one of these up. Also included in every trigger is a replacement spring that brings the trigger pull weight all the way up to seven pounds for military and law enforcement. I can't show you any of that because YouTube gets mad if you teach elementary skills like how to rotate things, but Elf Tactical does have some great installation videos over on their YouTube, which is funny, and on their website to show you how to adjust and install all these triggers. Forward of the trigger weight adjustment is the sear adjustment. This allows you to control the length of pull independent from the trigger weight, meaning you can have a long creep to a clean break or adjust it all the way down so the trigger fails, then go back half a turn to get a super, super short creep right into that clean break. Now, usually at this part of the video, I would show you like the break and reset travel, but you can literally adjust it to what you want. So I don't know, that test at this point is kind of dumb. Same with the trigger pull weight showing you that. Also dumb, you can adjust it. You can make it super light and short and it'll be totally awesome, I'll tell you that. Now, at the bottom of our trigger, we also have our trigger shoe. Now, as I stated, you can get this in red or black and in rounded versions like mine or in a more flat design. You can also just remove the shoe altogether if you just want a flat blade trigger. But I did find I liked the shoe a lot because it gave me an easy and consistent place to put my finger every time instead of kind of sort of maybe being in the correct place. The shoe really makes the trigger act more like a button and that plays into the no fail sear design that I'm gonna show you. Just keep that in the back of your mind as we go through the next steps. The shoe is also adjustable up and down so you can just get it perfect to your finger position. Yeah, I just love that thing. Next we have our pro connection system. Instead of using standard roll pins, this means that the bushing themselves are threaded allowing you to just install the whole setup with a screw and a lock washer and not pins that walk out. The Apex also has feet along the bottom to give you six total contact points with the lower. You just screw in the four screws and then lock in the bottom feet and the whole thing is rock solid. You don't have to worry about anything coming loose in that setup. Now, I have some lowers like the Griffin Mark II and I'm aware of some other Ambi lowers that do have some unique geometry. In those cases, you can purchase the non-pro version and just use the regular anti-walk pins and secure the trigger against the pins with the bottom feet like the ELF SE I have. And I purchased that SE configuration exactly how I did it with the regular pins because I'm gonna be putting it in the Griffin Mark II lower and it works just perfectly in that setup. The securing method is the same way the Match 2 trigger and the IWI Zion is done and I've had nothing but amazing results from that setup. Now the pro screws do make the whole thing just absolutely rock solid. And I do recommend that you go that route if your lower allows it. Pro screws with knob and the rounded shoe, trust me. The hammer spring is also double wound, which Elf claims gives it the strongest spring you can get in this cassette space. Now we don't talk a lot about this, but I have seen quite a few NATO primers that have snuck their way into some lower tiers of ammo that I have. And I'm very curious if the stronger hammer of the ELF trigger is gonna make it so there's no problem with those. I've seen some other triggers definitely get tripped up and even across like three or four different platforms. So yes, we're definitely gonna mix in that batch of ammo that causes problems. ELF also states the hammer uses a full roller bearing, giving it an extremely fast lockup and fire rate along with being completely drop safe. I'll give you some foreshadowing. This is the first trigger I've ever seen where I can't pull it as fast as that trigger actually wants to run. It's, it's just impressive. Now though, let's get into some of the design behind the no fail trigger. And to do this, I gotta install it so I can show it all to you correctly. Here, I'll show you how a standard lower and trigger operates first. This is just, this is just mil spec trigger. Normally when you pull the trigger back, the trigger stays to the rear and the hammer falls then the bolt goes backwards and the hammer engages the disconnector. You then release the trigger and the hammer resets. But there exists a middle space when the weapon is bouncing around or you're doing silly things where the trigger doesn't engage properly with the disconnector or your finger releases early, 
and this can result in trigger inconsistency or light strikes. Now, I'm no expert in triggers and how they all operate. This is kind of Elf's claim and explaining how it all works in their design. But it makes sense to me that something odder could happen if you have this position that's kind of, something weird could happen. While the hammer should be strong enough regardless, I could see the hammer being in a weird position to skip or follow the bolt or just not hit the firing pin correctly. Light primer strikes are a thing, particularly when I'm running a trigger super fast or just jockeying things around, so maybe there is some validity to that. Now looking at the apex, we see both a disconnector at the front and a sear at the rear. Now when the trigger fires like normal, the hammer engages the bottom disconnector and resets, just like it always normally would. But now, if I release the trigger halfway to simulate a halfway engagement oddball situation, you see the sear now engages and resets the trigger like normal, meaning the trigger has two different reset positions, negating the fail position of a trigger with a standard disconnector. What's interesting is kind of this byproduct of this double reset design is that you don't really have to hold the trigger back because it's gonna reset regardless of the position meaning you could more so just tap the trigger like a PlayStation button and just go absolutely wild. Before we go to the range and I show you all that, I did mention that this also has a no-fail design. And I think with all the adjustments and the trigger shoes and the sear adjustment, there's gonna be a lot of keyboard warriors that are gonna say like, oh my God, this thing's crazy, it's just gonna fail on you. But check this out. For the rear trigger weight adjustment screw, if this falls out, you now just have a two and a half trigger pull weight. If the sear adjustment screw falls out, you just have full sear engagement with a long pull. And if the trigger shoe itself falls off, you just have a standard flat face blade trigger. So even if all the small adjustment screws fall out for some reason, the whole trigger still operates and it just adds another whole tier to this no fail claim. But you know what? Results are what matters and I have all sorts of ammo. I have good ammo, I have bad ammo, and I have finicky ammo. So I took all of those, mixed them up, and load them into magazines randomly just to see if Elf can live up to their claim. First round, I load up a small mag just to make sure everything was operating after installation and I didn't have any issues. Apparently I can't count though. <laughs> everything seems to be working fine. So far, so good. Let's go faster now and try to trip it up. Here I loaded up nine and started working the trigger and well, wow, that was easy. All right, let's load all the way up and do the cool Instagram shooting thing. Okay, so it's chewing through pretty much everything so far, but there's one thing I'm, I guess I would say I'm a little bit annoyed by, it's faster than me. It wants to run faster than I can even move my finger. Next, I just wanna do some longer strings of shots and get some movement in to try to get the trigger to fail on me. <laughs> nope, didn't fail. But okay, how fast can I run this? Slow-mo, you can see me making some extra movement and really getting in sync with this trigger to just push it like a button and really rip through everything. I mean, yeah, auto is significantly faster, but that bolt is barely locking in place before it's ripping off another shot, and that's just really impressive. And I think it's the whole trigger acting more like a button to give a totally different feel. It's more of a click, click, click instead of a pull, pull, pull. It's, it's very unique, but it's certainly, certainly faster. Again, too, the pad is playing into that whole push button style to give me a larger place to put my finger instead of just that, you know, that thin blade like a normal trigger would. Now this next one I love because I got all excited thinking I finally had a failure. Nope, I just didn't let the trigger reset all the way. You can see it on the slow mode that I'm not letting it travel all the way forward before trying to fire again. I think I'm just trying to really push the envelope on speed and my finger doesn't, like literally doesn't move that fast. Doing one more fast long round, I got back in sync and had a small hiccup from not getting all the way to reset again, but then got right back on it. And that was really the highlights. Uh, the Apex ate through every single bit of ammo, every one from the good, the bad, the finicky, without any issues. I will say there's also some validity to the stronger hammer because I know a lot of the ammo we used was super finicky and has NATO primers that sometimes work their way in 
and it ran flawlessly. Now, we probably could keep shooting and do more testing, but at this point, I'm really confident in this trigger. From our testing, the ELF Apex gave us a no-fail trigger, which actually lived up to all their claims. Flawlessly running all sorts of ammo we threw at it without even the slightest problem. For me, I'm definitely gonna leave the Apex in this night vision setup because I think it just threw the whole reliability of that entire platform just through the roof. And from duty to home defense, I'll say that the Apex trigger is just a fantastic choice to guarantee your rifle is gonna fire each and every time. Plus, I think the best part is it's not a stupid jizzly trigger. I'm even more excited now to try out the Elf SE trigger in our Griffin setup to see how crazy we can make that Mark II Ambi lower. The Elf trigger and the Griffin Mark II lower may be that match made in absolute heaven. We're gonna, we're gonna find out for sure. But I hope this review of the Elf Apex trigger and finding out if it really is no fail was useful in your purchasing decisions. I wanna say thanks to all of our YouTube members and our Patreon supporters. You make it possible we can go out and actually test a lot of these claims and see if what they're saying in the firearm industry is actually true and maybe some, maybe some test some in the future that aren't so true, that would be fun to do. And I also wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what your favorite trigger is and why it's gonna be the Elf Apex. All right, everybody, watch out. It's a rare day when you meet a company that makes a claim and then, you know, says, hey, here, prove it. And they just hand it to you and you test it out and you, you come out of it going, wow, that's kind of ridiculous. Like every time I was using it, I would come out of the drill and be like, okay, wait, but I think I can run that faster. Like, and every single time I, I was just surprised by that. Like there was that string where I did like the five, five and five. And I don't think I've ever run a trigger or an entire firearm weapon system faster than that. It is just, it's just impressive. So kudos to Elf for actually living up to and making claims that are real and not hype and nonsense. It's very refreshing and it makes for a company that I want to invest more of my money and time into. So, yep, that's me rambling here at the end. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll add in some clips of me jumping around doing something stupid out here, but <laughs> maybe not, I don't know. It's windy. I got stuff to do, work on night vision, tons of cool stuff. All right, I'm, I'm not jumping around, <laughs> get out of here.